Winters to the podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to get to talk to you because I got so in to your In Darkness series with Hidden in Darkness. Joel Leslie recommended it to me uh, when the audio dropped. I listen to anything that he tells me I need to listen to, and this was right on the mark. For folks who don't know what the In Darkness series is about, tell us all about it. Um, it's basically about, uh, my main character's name is Felix, and he is hired to help take care of a man named Lane who has recently been blinded. And uh, he's kind of not really the perfect person for the job. He's a little snarky and, and you know, he makes a lot of jokes and stuff, And um, but he actually kind of helps helps Lane a little bit because Lane has kind of fallen into depression and and he's used to being out in the action and doing things and suddenly now he can't feels like he can't even leave the house. He feels like he can't do anything. So Felix kind of steps in and and gets him to open up a little bit that way. Um, Felix kind of learns that there's more to what happened to Lane and and that Lane is actually an undercover cop and and suddenly just drags Felix into this whole uh, scenario with a bunch of stuff going on. And um, Felix has kind of um, always been, had a little darker of a upbringing, so he kind of fits in a little bit with it. And he's a little bit of a petty thief as well, so they kind of end up working together like that. And, the books are kind of, you can't take them too seriously. I think some people go in thinking that they're going to be uh, super serious action. And and you can't, Felix and Lane just get into situations that wouldn't be realistic in a regular book. And they, uh, Felix finds a way to make everything ridiculous and fun. And Lane just is there for the action. And, and he wants to not be held back by his blindness. He wants to still be able to do the things that he was able to do as a cop, even though he really can't anymore. And Felix tries his hardest to kind of give him those opportunities to still be able to do that, but then put his own little Felix twist on things. That's one of the things I liked so much about the book is I've gotten really into romantic suspense like over the last year. And a lot of them are quite serious and deservedly so because, you know, usually mm -hmm. somebody's in peril or multiple people are in peril. And then here you do have snarky, kind of sarcastic, kind of fearless, most of the time, Felix, who keeps nudging Lane out of his comfort zone to get the stuff done. And somehow keeping it all very, I won't say light and fluffy, but there are that there is those moments of like, breaking the tension that I think only Felix can do. Yeah, I agree. Cause, um, I think Felix just, he makes everything like more jokes. So even if it's like a, a heavier topic, he always has to kind of put his side on it or his spin on it. And, and then he loves to run into things that he really shouldn't be doing. And he always admits that he has no idea what he's doing, but he's still going to do it anyways. And, I think that's kind of how he gets into all his issues and although i think he knows more than he really thinks he does <laughs> i i agree he's he's street smart i think that yeah. kind of helps him out with things and you know he grew up kind of having to take care of himself so he knows how to do these things and knows how to do although he's usually a little bit on the other side of the law because you know he used he grew up stealing things and and taking care of himself that way, where Lane, obviously, he was a cop, so he kind of um, is a little, agrees doing, always wants to do things better, or pick the better option. What was your inspiration to the series to come up with these two very diverse and divergent characters? It's a good question, but I don't, I don't really know what made me think of this. I actually started these books a maybe like two or three years ago and I started the first one and I wrote about 20 pages on it and I set it to the side and I don't know if I ever plan on picking it up again. Um, when I did pick it up, I kind of made it a little less serious 
He looks a little goofier, laying a less, not as serious than everything. And it just kind of, it felt right then. And I just went with it. That's very cool. Kind of, I, I like the organic kind of growth. It sounds like that, that had. Mm-hmm. Now you've got a third book coming up in March. Uh, what do we have to look forward to with, with Lane and Felix this time out? Well, in the second book, Felix ends up stealing a watch. And because he's good at these things where he can steal things from people, and that's what he <laughs> enjoys doing. So he ends up stealing a watch. And it basically kind of comes back to bite him in the butt. And so him and Lane are kind of pulled into a whole new situation, dealing with trying to get this watch back and trying to kind of amend things, but then they end up getting pulled into something even even further. And then we have Lane who, well, Felix kind of in the second book talks a little bit about how he would be perfectly fine, you know, just sitting at home and having a regular life with Lane. Lane still is eager for that action that he used to have being an undercover cop and he still really wants to do those type of things so Lane's always jumps on the action and Felix just follows along not many cops can have that kind of assistant on the side <laughs> it's, I really like how that plays itself out they talk a little bit in the third book because a lot of people are always always blaming Felix for a lot of the action and they're like well Felix is the one to do it and I'm like but if you really think about it, it's actually Lane who's always eager to do these things. But Felix puts his own spin on everything. And and Lane will suggest, okay, let's go. For example, in the third book, they're, they're trying to steal something. And, and Lane's like, let's go steal it. And then Felix ends up putting this random twist on it that ends up, you know, uh, getting them chased by people and, and in a shootout and all this type of stuff because of what Felix ends up pulling them into. He, he had a knack, he, even in the first book, of hearing what Lane wanted to do and then going and making it like maybe 10 times worse to get it, to get it yes. done. Yes, that's usually what Felix does. Which is usually his charm, in my view, too. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where most of the comic relief comes from, is, is Felix. Lane's very serious. Now, Lane will joke back with Felix, and I think he doesn't joke as much with the other characters, but I think Felix brings that out in him. Um, but that's kind of where all the comedy more comes from is from Felix's little antics. Again, I, I keep going back to what I really liked in the book, but I liked how Felix really got Lane to get out of that too serious mode and get him out of his essentially, essentially his funk mm -hmm. that he descended himself into from the accident. And, you know, I think the more he embraces that, probably the better for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because, I mean, it'd have to be hard, especially for someone like Lane, to now not be able to really do anything that he could he used to be able to do. And then, um, like, there's really not a place for him in the police force anymore because he's blind now, so he can't be out in the field. He can't be doing these things. So Felix keeps him from falling back into that depression. Mm -hmm. Do you plan more in the series now that you're up to a trilogy? I've played around with the idea. I left the end of the third book. I set it up so that there could easily be more. But I like to kind of conclude each story in, in each book so that, you know, if there isn't any more, there's story still concluded, but there's obviously room for a whole lot more. I do feel like I will do another book. I just enjoy working with these two characters so much that it's kind of fun to go back to them. Fingers crossed. I have these two books to catch up on, but I know I like these characters. So all I can say is I think the more the merrier. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the In Darkness series was also your first foray into going into audiobooks. Uh, how did that come about? Did you seek those out or did someone come to you for the licensing? Or uh, They actually came to me about it and I really had never planned on doing anything with audiobooks at the time. Um, so they reached out and asked if they could do it, and I was, I was super nervous about it because I just felt like, like you kind of have your image of your character in your head and how they sound and how they act that I was really nervous that I would not like hearing Felix out loud. 
And I told them that I would do it, but as long as I could, okay, the narrator. Mm-hmm. And so they came to me with, um, the first person that they came to me with was, which was Joel. And, um, so I, I listened, I haven't listened to a lot of audiobooks, so I actually didn't know him. So I went through and I listened to some samples that they had given me of him and, and I was still kind of nervous because most of the samples they gave me, Joel wasn't reading, he, uh, like a, he was reading more of like a dramatic role. Mm-hmm. So I was still uncertain of how he would do with, you know, Felix's banter and things like that. And I don't, I did not get to listen to the audiobook at all before it was published. So I was listening to it as, you know, everybody else was. So that was like my first time listening to it. And I remember listening to about five minutes or so of it. And then I, I sent Joel a message and just told him that, that, you know, he obviously did a perfect job with Felix and he, you could tell he spent a lot of time figuring out how to properly portray some of the jokes and stuff, because I feel like Felix could, if, in the hands of the wrong narrator could come off almost like a little bratty with how his, how he says things and how he does things and, and almost like a little rude in some ways if it's not said properly. But Joel did that perfectly. And I've read the book so many times that like, I don't laugh at, at them as I'm reading them, but I was listening. I listened to both of the audiobooks and he had me laughing out loud on more than one occasion on how, he was able to depict the lines and stuff like that. That's clearly the sign of a job well done. And, and from yep. Joel, I'm not surprised either. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, he did an excellent job with Felix. That's really excellent. Uh, can you envision more audiobooks of your work down the line, given the positive experience of this one? Yeah, I would love to, you know, kind of get my hand into more audiobooks and. It'll kind of depend as we go along, but I would love to see more of them as audiobooks. Cool. Is the third book on its? Will, will that be coming on its way, or do you know yet? It will, but it's a little bit down the ways sure. a little bit. Yeah. Joel's very busy. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Now, earlier this year, you also released uh, Within the Mind another type of romantic suspense book. Um, tell us what to expect with this one, because I'm, I'm intrigued by its premise. Um, that book's a, it's a little bit darker. It's a little more serious in some ways, because um, it's about two detectives that have the ability to go into people's memories. And they basically work for the police going into, like, for example, if someone like, was um, attacked and they were in a coma or something, he can go into their memory and he can um, figure out what happened to this person and he can see exactly what happens and help them find the attacker. Uh, So they end up getting uh, asked by a homicide department to go into the mind of a serial killer. And once they're in the serial killer's mind, they find out things aren't really what they originally thought they were going to be and that the serial killer themselves also has a gift that kind of manipulates these memories. And it sounds super serious, but it also has a lot of humor and banter in it as well to kind of cushion that. And I tried really hard to keep in, keep things from getting too serious or too dark by using the humor in their banter. And the main character, Chevy, he's he's more serious than Felix, and he's a little bit more dry in his humor. But then we have Seneca, who is more lighthearted, and everybody loves him, and he's outgoing. So we kind of have one character that's very shy and one character that's very outgoing, and they kind of they clash but work perfectly together kind of thing. Interesting. Now I'm even more intrigued from having, <laughs> you know, from what I was reading leading into the interview. Uh, is this also going to probably head into series as well with these characters? I would, I, I would like to make this a series. Um, it is my plan at the moment to kind of do more with the characters. Cause I feel like you kind of really only get into the relationship side towards the end of the book. And I feel like because they're working with the police, there's so many different opportunities for them to have, to get involved in cases and, and, 
you know, I really don't delve too much into other people's gifts in it besides the main antagonist. So it'd be fun in, you know, future books to kind of branch out on that type of stuff as well. That's very cool. You mentioned with the In Darkness books that you couldn't really pin down like the inspiration behind those characters. Where would you say overall that your inspiration comes from for these for these suspenseful tales and the character you you tend to create? It's a very hard question. I I don't really know. I mean, same with the I was trying to think of that for within the mind as well. What made me think of that and and I don't remember. I remember starting the book a couple of years ago. I actually started it with a female protagonist and it was supposed to be more of a horror. And I just couldn't get past page five and it just didn't feel right. It wasn't going anywhere and I just stopped it. I don't, I don't know. Usually something inspires me, but I don't really, can't really remember for either of those what made me think of it. You mentioned for both of the, for a couple of these things now that, you know, you, you put in darkness away for a while and you just mentioned this female protagonist when you were in like a few pages and stopped. Is your process more around outlining or just kind of writing and see where it takes you? I usually just write and see where it takes me. I usually can just um, just kind of jump into a book. Those were really the only ones I've written recently that I had kind of set away for a while and jumped back into. Usually, if I kind of have an idea, I can go into it and just start writing. But I like to only write one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So like within the mind, I had started that while I was writing a different series. And I kind of just had the idea in my head and I wanted to get a few pages down and so I did and then I was like well I'll get back to it when I'm done with the book I'm currently working on and then I just never did I never got back to it I kind of moved on to something else I, I easily get excited to start another book and then I just jump into it and go and I try not to write too much like I'm not good at writing two things at the same time I like to just focus on one book and I'm intrigued that you can do these suspenseful mystery books and not plot it more out. I think that would stress me out a little bit if I didn't know how, at least how the mystery part was going to kind of play itself out. Yeah. Sometimes I kind of have a good idea in mind. And like in Darkness 3, I just went into it and I had, for a lot of it, I had no idea where I was going with it. And then it just kind of, fell into place I usually get to that point where like I have an idea and then I just kind of have to sit and think about it for a while and and then you know I can go from there but I usually just jump into the book usually I know I know who the characters are and a few main scenes that I want to hit in it before I get started that is super cool I love that (laughs) let's do a little origin story so what led you into writing and, and coming into MM Romance? I think I started writing when I was a lot younger because my mom wrote a little bit. She doesn't write anymore, but she wrote a little bit. And, of course, I wanted to do what she was doing. So um, I used to play on her old typewriter and write out stories that way. And then I just kind of got addicted to it from there. And, I mean, I had hundreds of notebooks that I used to I was horrible at not paying attention in school. I was just the person just sat in the back and wrote in my notebooks the whole time. And as with the romance aspect of it, um, I feel like I've always kind of written from a male's perspective. I've tried to write a few books from a female uh, point of view, but I never finished them. I don't know if I have a single book that I've finished with a female protagonist. But I've always kind of been like that. Even like when I play video games and stuff, I always pick the male protagonist. And maybe kind of what led me to like the MM part of it is like, I was kind of like, always felt I was a little bit strange, never really wanting to date anybody or relationships with anybody. And like back in high school, I started to kind of resent like male, female romance in books. And because it's like, that was what was normal. And I felt like I wasn't normal and I needed to be normal. And I started to resent that kind of side of it. And I don't know if that's kind of just what pulled me into it. And 
it's like now that I'm older, I just accept myself for who I am. I don't feel like I need to, you know, label myself as anything or fit into whatever category other people think I should fit into and I'm more comfortable that way. And so that stuff doesn't bother me as much anymore. But I feel like back in high school and stuff, I, I really had that kind of issue. And that's really when I started writing this, you know, these type of romances. Mm-hmm. I like that it goes back that many years for you. I mean, that, that's very cool. What sent you down the romantic suspense path? I will literally write just about any genre. Um, I kind of have to have some type of plot, though. Mm. I, I don't think I could write, like, a full romance. Maybe, like, a novella I could, but I just I feel like I have to have some type of plot, like, pushing the book forward. So it doesn't nearly, like, really have to be the suspense. I've, you know, I've, I have, like, a fantasy and stuff that I've wrote and any type of that stuff, but... I just like, I don't know, I just like the the action pushing it and, like, that type of the plot. I kind of like to have plot as part and then the romance as part and kind of combine them together. Mm-hmm. So, really, you might branch off into any other genre just as inspiration strikes and you find the right plot and the right characters to do it with. Yeah, I feel like I would. I don't, I get bored very easily just writing like the same type of thing. It's it's just it with like I just the people that can write like a series of ten where they kind of like and like do cases every time, like I think that's awesome, but I don't know if I could do it. I feel like I would I kinda get bored of it and have to move and do something completely different. Mm-hmm. What would you say the trademark of an Alice Winters book is? I feel like most people would say it'd be the banter between my characters. Like even my more serious books, I still kind of enjoy that banter and that dialogue. I love a book with dialogue in it. And I feel like my books are very heavy on the dialogue. I generally, when I write a book, I probably write too much dialogue and not enough description. And I generally have to go back and actually describe what people look like and where they're at and what they're doing. Because I love the dialogue. I could I could write dialogue all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of that way too. It's like I, I, I populate the scene later. Let's write the write the exactly. dialogue because that's that's the that's the fun and easy part in a lot of ways. <laughs> it is. Yeah. What do you like to read when you're not writing? I'll read just about anything. I do like I do like the thrillers. I do like comedy, uh, fantasy. I I literally if it has a excellent character in it I'll read just about anything. It, I'm not super picky when it comes to those type of things. I do like I do like a unique character that kind of stands out. And like I said I do like a lot of good dialogue in books. Some books are very descriptive heavy and and I feel like I kind of my attention kind of wanders sometimes on things like that, but um a book with a good character and good fun dialogue between them and stuff really stands out to me. What's coming up for you for the rest of this year uh, after the new uh, In Darkness book comes out? Um, I plan to have another book out maybe around April. Um, I like to kind of release something maybe every other month for the rest of the year and kind of just go from there. I'm not yet sure what I'm releasing. I'm just kind of taking it a little bit at a time, but that's my plan for the rest of this year. That's exciting to churn out six books in a year. Yes. And I'm hoping it all all works out well, but I have an awesome team now that's kind of helping me and my editors and my my editor and my beta readers and some stuff like that. So I feel like I'm finally at this point where I can I can do things like that. Mm-hmm. What's the best way for everyone to keep up with you online to you know keep track of what's coming coming later this year? I have a reader group on Facebook, which is Alice Winter's Wonderland. Um, And then I also have a newsletter that they can access to my website, which is alicewintersauthor.com. Perfect. We will link up to all that in the show notes, as well as the books we've talked about. Wish you so much success with this third in darkness book. And I'm looking forward to reading it. I think I'm going to have to wait for Joel to do it, though, because I think I need him to read it to me. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. 